Hey folks, David Fine here from Keys Moths. This is our series on how to curate a, an insect collection. And so today we are gonna be talking about how to properly store your specimens. Uh, you know, if you're not gonna get to mounting them real quick and before they dry out, you gotta make sure they're stored properly. And you know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Insects are very fragile. So we're gonna give you a few tips on how to properly store insect specimens. So storing your insect specimens, it takes a little bit of thought, it takes a little bit of time. But if you're gonna properly take care of an insect collection, and you're gonna care for the specimens that you work so hard to find, there's a few things that you've gotta know, and it takes a, it's worth taking the extra effort to make sure that you properly take care of your specimens uh, once you once you've collected them. So the first thing, maybe one of the most important things, is if you're collecting Lepidoptera, make sure that you have the right glassine envelopes. These envelopes, there's all different styles and sizes, and you can buy them at BioQuip products. And so you can go to BioQuip.com. We have the link to their website in the description of this video. We buy all of our entomological supplies from them and they're located out here in California. And guys, these are pretty cheap. I buy them by the thousand just to make sure I have enough. And if you put your butterfly or moth specimen in your glassine envelope, uh, the glassine is designed not to remove scales from a Lepidopteran's wings. So you can, this butterfly has been in this envelope a couple of years <laughs> and it's the wings, there's no scales missing whatsoever. That The glassine envelope does not remove scales. Whereas if you were to make like a paper envelope, the paper is very fibrous and as it rubs against the paper, the scales will come off and you'll see them floating around. Uh, when you open up your envelope, dust comes out and butterfly scales. No bueno. Also, when let's say you go out collecting moths and you're out at the light sheet and you've got your dump jar full of moths and you come home. Uh, there's a temptation. If you're like me, I'll, I'll burn the candle from both ends. And by the time I'm done collecting, I'm exhausted. The last thing I want to do is sit there for an hour and change and fold all the wings of my moths over the back of their heads, because it can be a pain, and put them each in envelopes like this so that they won't get messed up. But I can tell you right now, the times that I'd say, eh, I'll do it in the morning, those, if the wings are inverted, you know, you want those wings behind their back. If the wings are inverted and you try and do it in the morning, their body fluids start to evaporate and it starts to get really, really tough. And your specimens typically don't have the same amount of flexibility if you wait. I like to knock that out immediately. So whenever I go collecting, you know, I'm done collecting, I go home, whatever specimens I'm gonna mount and uh, ship out to the university or whatever, I'm gonna make sure that I put the wings back behind the head and put them in one of these glassine envelopes as quick as possible. Very important, it takes time, it's very tedious. Uh, you need to make sure you have a good pair of forceps and you can also get these at BioQuip, uh, but it, it is worth it because you will save specimens if you take the extra time and make sure all of your specimens get into envelopes. Very important. Okay, now let's say I have a handful of specimens that we've collected and I put them all in envelopes. What you wanna do is you, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be an expensive container. This is a very, very cheap, kind of like plastic Tupperware kind of thing. And, you know, you put them in here and you wanna have, make sure that it's airtight. And the reason being is if, if you're gonna store your specimens in a closet or something like that, and it's not airtight, guess what can get inside? Dermestid beetles, mites, cockroaches, all of these things, ants. Ants, I, I can't tell you how many specimens I've lost to ants. I'm sitting on my mounting boards or in a, in a box like this and they're not airtight. Uh, you wanna make sure that your container is airtight. Get a Tupperware. I actually use those ones a lot of times that have the snap things on the side with the rubber seal. We know for sure those are airtight. I love using those. So now I have a Tupperware full of specimens. If I plan on mounting them sometime in the next few weeks, you know, you can stick this in the freezer. And if it's airtight, you can put it in the freezer. And as you take it out, 
you can take out what you're going to mount for the evening or at, in a mounting session and mount them. Make sure you close it quick and put it back in the freezer. You wanna make sure if you have dead specimens that you don't leave this open because if you leave this open, especially in an air conditioning, the air conditioning will dry out your specimens and then you're gonna to have to put them in the relaxing chamber uh, or the rehydration chamber, which I prefer, I prefer my specimens never have to get to a rehydration chamber if possible. So if I'm collecting them, I like to keep them nice and moist and nice and flexible with their own natural body fluids uh, so that we don't have to rehydrate them with just with water. We're gonna go over how to create and operate a rehydration chamber here in another video, but I always prefer mounting my specimens with their natural body fluids. It, there's a lot greater flexibility and specimens come out better. So you can put this in your freezer, but if it's gonna be in the freezer for a long period of time, they will freeze or burn. So I would say if you're planning, if you're not planning on mounting specimens for a while, or you're going to send them to somebody. What you're going to want to do is there's one of two options. If you put butterflies or moths or beetles inside of a container like this, and they've got all their natural fluids and it's airtight, and it's not in a freezer, what do you think is going to happen? You got it. Fungus. <laughs> Fungus is going to start to grow. Mildew uh, uh, is going to grow on your specimens and it's going to destroy them. So there is a chemical, little crystals that you can buy in a little uh, container called chlorocresol. Again, chlorocresol. And what you can do is you can put chlorocresol crystals inside of an envelope and put it inside of your container. And what that does is it inhibits mold growth. So you can have chlorocresol container uh, package in here and you have your butterflies or moths and they're just sitting there like this and they will never get moldy. So uh, again, you don't wanna leave them in that condition for too long. If you plan on keeping your specimens for a prolonged period of time in a container like this, I would say make sure that your specimens are dried out before closing this lid finally and putting them away in storage. So make sure that they dry out first because that makes things a lot more simple because once they're dry, you don't have to worry about mold. Then you can close it and you can put it in a closet or wherever. And so um, that those are some helpful tips to make sure your specimens don't get ruined. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Storing your specimens. If you want really beautiful mounted specimens for scientific collection, you've got to take care of your specimens. And the hours after you collect your specimens are the most important. So if you like the video, guys, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This playlist is going to have a ton of videos on how to curate an insect collection for scientific research. So if you learned something, drop me a comment. What do you want to know next? I'd be happy to share with you. Guys, take care and let's get out there and find some bugs. Bye now.